Hello everyone, and welcome to my 11th tutorial on how to create full stack web applications. In this tutorial, I'm going to uh, enable the user to register uh, new accounts and also log in under accounts that they've created uh, by using ng resource to interact with our wrestle endpoint. So this is going to, this tutorial we're going to be covering an ng resource and this tutorial should provide you with the material you need to interact with other kinds of wrestle endpoints and also interact with other kinds of resources. So uh, this tutorial is not going to be covering security th features, I'm just going to uh, basically register the user by uh, saving a new record in the database and also for logging in the user I'm just going to check does the username exist and so there won't be any authentication or, or authorization but it will enable but this part of the project will enable us to build the rest of the application and maybe in a future tutorial I might uh, create a tutorial on uh, security and authentication uh, but for now I'm just going to stick to the basics here and I'm going to uh, start off by uh, going to our account.js file here and I'm going to create a service to interact with our RESTful endpoint so um, now before we are able to in inject re uh, before we are able to use ng resource we're going to have to install uh, the angular resource module so uh, you're going to want to go to uh, your command prompt and cancel the watch task by hitting control C and type bower install angular resource so uh, this may prompt you for the most recent version of angular or for a selection of different angular versions if it does select the most recent version and it should download uh, ng resource to your vendor directory so if I go down here and go to our vendor directory you can see angular resource is now contained in here and what we can do is we can include this in our build by op opening, out, opening up our build.config.js file and you want to scroll to the bottom of the file and add the new uh, minified version of angular resource to this list of includes here so I'm going to right click on the angular resource module uh, uh, source file and I'm going to click copy reference and I'm going to place it in this list of vendor files and I'm just going to remove everything before vendor and that should include angular resource uh, in your build system now the next step would be including it in the dependency section of your account module which is where we're going to create our account service for registering and logging in a user so I'm going to scroll to the top here and I'm going to inject ng resource so that should include ng resource in this particular module so now you can inject the resource service of, in, of the uh, angular resource module so I'm going to go scroll down on the page here and I'm going to create a new service here called account service and in this function I'm going to inject our uh, resource the resource service now this will enable us to interface with our endpoint uh, now before we get continue any further I'm going to restart our grunt watch task so that we get uh, code uh, so that we can hear if we are creating any syntax errors okay so now it should be started up and if I create a syntax error here we should hear a beep okay so it's working properly and uh, so I'm going to create a JSON object representing our service now. I'm going to call it service equals JSON object and I'm going to return the service and I'm going to specify to create a method on the service called register and I'm going to pass in the account data and also a success and failure callback method that will specify from our controller now the account data will be the account data the user enters on the form and so to actually save that to the endpoint we're going to want to create a class representing the endpoint by call, uh, creating an uh, account resource here and I'm going to specify the resource endpoint I'm going to specify our endpoint now And this should uh, create a, an, a class representing our endpoint. And I can now perform a function to save our data to that endpoint by calling account.save. And now I'm going to specify um, a, 
a number of possible query parameters you can specify in this field. And the next uh, parameter is the data. And the next one is the success and failure callbacks. So that should save our account data to the server. Now to test this, I'm going to go to our register function and I'm going to inject our service. And I'm going to call account service dot register and I'm going to pass in the data from our form and I'm going to call a function. Now this is going to be returned data from the server and I'm also going to create a failure function and the failure function I'm just going to alert the user that there is an error registering and of course you want to probably change the UI in a more uh, advanced application and I'm going to uh, specify the message uh, error registering user okay and in our success function I'm going to log in the user using our service with the return data. So this should be a JSON object representing the new account and uh, should not contain the password. So when it prints out uh, the, the credentials uh, part of our login method here, uh, user login with credentials, data.name and data.password, uh, data.password will be undefined. So I'm going to go back to our, uh, go, go down here, and I'm going to also have the state return the user to the home page. Now if we now if everything's working correctly, um, we should be able to register users now and see new accounts in the database using the Postman service. So I'm going to go to our web page now and I'm going to go to register here. I'm going to type Chris password. Okay. So uh, it says user logged in with credentials Chris and undefined. And if I go to our Postman service and send a request to accounts, you can see that there's a new account populated in the list. And just to illustrate uh, that that's working, I'm going to create another account. And I'm going to send another request. So you can see new accounts are be being created. Uh, now one thing we'd like to do is be able to check does an account exist for when we're logging in a user. So I, in order to do that, I'm going to use a query parameter. Now in our controller is a function called find all accounts that accepts a, re a query, query parameter and of type name. So we can specify uh, Bob, for example, and uh, or we can specify we can do a get request here. I can do a specify a name of Joe and you can see it returns the account Joe. So the accounts will be filtered based on the name and because names are unique in our database uh, any time we create a new account uh, it will any time we request a new account uh, we'll be able to see does, has the account does the account already exist based on the uh, wh whether or not the accounts array is empty or not. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and use this functionality to um, uh, to check if accounts exist. So we're going to go back to our code here, and I'm going to go to our account service and create a function called um, user exists. And this is going to be a function to check if the account exists. And we're going to have a success callback and a failure callback. And we're also going to create account a uh, class like we did previously. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to call account.get. And now we're going to specify a query parameter here. So I'm going to specify name of account.name. And for the username and pass, uh, and for the uh, success and failure callbacks, I'm going to create a function here to call, I'm going to call the, uh, I'm going to create a custom function here. And I'm going, uh, now when you call get, it does return the data um, if from this function so I can so the body of request is contained in the resp uh, response and uh, in the return value of the get function so I can go ahead and create a callback here and this callback is executed after the data is returned so I'm going to specify uh, I'm going to call the success function and pass in the data on success and on failure I'm just going to call the failure function. So I'll just pass in the failure function there. So I'm getting an error now, so I need a semicolon here. Okay, so now we're good, and I'm, I should be able to use this function to see if a user exists. And I'm going to go to our login controller here, down here, and I'm going to inject our account service. 
and I'm going to call account service that user exists and pass in the form data and on if the user do, uh, data does does exist so um, I just realized I need to do one more thing here so data is returning an array of accounts so we need to take out the array from the data and we need to check if the accounts dot length is not equal to zero and if it's not equal to zero then the account exists so we can call the success function in that case so I'm going to call it success with the data and otherwise we're going to want to call failure so I'm just going to call failure now so that should enable so that should work there and I'm getting error let's see okay I think the error is associated with uh, something I wrote down here so um yeah okay so I'm going to um, now uh, so this function is being passed the uh, data of the um, uh, the uh, well we need to actually pass in the account now so we're going to pass in the account that was found so I'm going to call it accounts zero so we're passing in the account at index zero into the success function and down here I'm going to do some, I'm going to log in the user with that data so I'm going to call session service dot login with the account data and for the failure function I'm just going to alert that there is an error logging in and I'm going to erase this these two lines of code and now I'm going to send the user back to the home page so I'm going to call state that go home so if everything is correct there we should be able to log in now uh, if the username exists. So I'm going to go to our web page here. I'm going to log out and log in. So these are the list of available accounts. And I'm going to try to log in as Chris now. And you can see it says user logged in with credentials Chris and undefined and takes us to the home page. So logging in is working. Now I'm going to click log out and log in as a username that doesn't exist. So Chris and Joe are in the database but uh, Bob isn't so I'm going to try to log in under the username Bob and you can see it says error logging and user so this is working properly and so basically our login functionality is working and uh, this is now that, again this is not a secure method of uh, logging in and registering users and you would need to do this over a secure link over HTTPS and also have a proper authentication and authorization mechanism in place but um, this will allow us to complete the rest of the project and um, allows us to, and also illustrates how to interact with a RESTful endpoint uh, if you guys found this tutorial helpful like comment and subscribe and thank you for watching